Hello, everybody. We're here. I'm Slim. You're Kiwi from Comixology, and we have a very special guest, Joe Kelly. I Kill Giants, everybody. Deadpool fame, man of action. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks can, for having me. Can Absolutely. I just say, your, your beard is a treasure. Oh, thank <laughs> it's a you. treasure. A national it's, treasure. It's new. It is. I'm working on it. Slow, <laughs> slow sculpting process, but thank you. It looks tremendous. Thank you. This is a big day. For the beard? Well, <laughs> for the beard, the man, <laughs> the man, the myth, the man behind the beard. Your your movie adaptation of I Kill Giants is available today. Yes. How's it feel? Uh, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Despite staying up really late with complete nervous uh, energy. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm so excited to uh, finally release it out into the world and have people get to see it. It was a really long road to get here. Mm. Um, I'm very, very proud of it. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled with how the film came out. Okay. Uh, Anders Walter did an incredible job directing it. For Our sure. The cast is Fantastic. unbelievable. I, I know we'll talk about all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited and uh, hope everybody checks it out. So We watched it this morning. We watched it this morning at the Amazing. Crack of Dawn. Yeah, you guys were hardcore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woke up like, pretty early. Pretty early. We knew we had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was amazing. I loved every second of it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, we were talking before, I Kill Giants is one of my favorite comic books I read it, I think, for the first time a few years ago. And I think you, when you were reading it, you were, like, texting me. I was and it was just, like, was sobbing like, noises. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you told me I was going to cry, and I always cry anyway. So, mm-hmm. But, it, yeah. I do, too. <laughs> so I, I Kill Giants uh, follows a 12-year-old girl uh, who dealing with uh, some, some dark things in her life, uh, her own way uh she fights giants so to speak in the comic book and the film Mm -hmm. um and what intrigues me about not the comic book but you wrote the screenplay right after writing the comic book yeah i um you know the comic script by itself is um it's it's a finished piece of something but you have to hand it over to an artist i didn't have an artist yet at the time so I just I was so into the story I just thought let me immediately adapt it for myself as a as a film script mm-hmm. um, I was trained as a screenwriter I went right. to NYU uh, dramatic writing big shot shout yeah, out right. shout out to NYU <laughs> um, and uh, I, I just loved it I wanted to have it ready mm-hmm. um, and then it took years for me to meet Ken Nomura uh, so during the course of that time I had friends read the script give me feedback that informed the comic script so it became this really cool like circular process so that when Ken finally was able to sit down and draw it. It had kind of gone through a few drafts already. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when we got picked up to be a film, then it went through a whole new set of revisions for for budget, creative, et cetera, all that stuff. So 12 or 13 versions, I think. Jeez Louise. What was the process like um, finding Ken? Like how did huh. how did that happen? Uh, just luck. Because uh, I honestly I couldn't like imagine the art any differently. No, and it's uh, you know I had I had friends and and other artists I had met over the course of time, yeah. kind of consider doing it mm-hmm. and, and drop out for various reasons. Um, one or two of them be like, oh, I should have drawn it. But <laughs> yeah. Very kind. Well, uh, that's that one up. <laughs> but but I do. I think yeah. I can only think of it this way yeah. as well. I met Ken at a convention in uh, Bilbao in Spain. Okay. And we were seated next to each other at a table. Uh-huh. And uh, the conventions in Europe were really art festivals, which is awesome. That is awesome. Um, and they don't. You have no clue who you're sitting next to. And so we're just chatting. He had this book out, and it was all this um, work he had done in school. And I put it in air quotes because he was still in school, oh, wow. which I didn't know. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's great. You draw all these cool styles. Uh, yeah. You know, we should, uh, would you like to do something maybe someday? And he said yes. And he totally played it cool like he was right. already a professional. Yeah, I had no awesome. idea. It was fantastic. And then, you know, he's like, oh, we just, let me develop, you know, some things for a little mm-hmm. while. It was him graduating. Like that's, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> but, but it's, you know, it's kind of my story too. I, I started working at Marvel while in grad school. So mm-hmm. it was that same, like, what? Well, I'm trying to be a pro yeah. and you know and and get out of here at the same time. So it was uh yeah, it was serendipity and that was That's it. Awesome. But he that this initial book of his had a lot of different types of art in it. Gotcha. Um so I just knew he had a really dynamic range and he could handle the acting that would be necessary especially. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, he was he was he's a treasure. Mm-hmm. I love him. He is a treasure. <laughs> How about the um you know the film adaptation which opens today you can get it pretty much anywhere? it's got a different vibe visually than the book. Mm -hmm. How was that process for you to come up with, uh, you know, if it was your kind of path 
to coming up with a night a visual style for the film when the the comic book the graphic novel is so different did you have like a vision that you wanted to hit or were you like open to several options because you knew in your heart that they would work no matter what well yeah i mean it yeah i was very confident in the story but it, it's a story that's easy to derail like mm -hmm. i told somebody recently like really early on some somebody had approached us and it was like so she kills like 30 giants in this movie and it's about like more blood and stuff we will make that movie i'm like that's, that's not, not it what at all. the thing is um but the uh the folks who came on board from early on all the producers uh really understood the story we were trying to tell mm -hmm. wanted to maintain the integrity of the of the comic and then in the film script and uh anders walter directed it his uh he won an Academy Award for a film called Helium, which starts to give you a sense of his visual style. It grounded with magical elements, which was exactly what we needed. Right. Uh, Nine Meter, which is another film of his that you can actually find online. Kind of a similar thing, super grounded, doesn't have the magic of Helium, but it, it's got a, a real world magic that mm -hmm. you know, kind of lends a gravity to the fantasy sequences yeah. and stuff that we wound up doing. Mm -hmm. And our DP, uh, Rasmus, is just, a super genius uh, amazing yeah beautiful stuff and the whole production team everybody knew that we were trying to do something that it's all from barbara's point of view right so right. we want to capture her uh her internal life really express that into the world but make sure it feels grounded enough so that anybody who's watching it is questioning well wait what, is this real is this not real what right. am i experiencing mm -hmm. and um uh every you know we often talk about like an amblin feel everybody wants mm -hmm. to kind of have that vibe right. um that is the grounded plus this heightened reality. So mm -hmm. they they were able to accomplish that from the beginning. And you know, Chris Columbus kind of knows <laughs> yeah. those kind of yeah. movies, so that didn't yeah. hurt. Yeah, no big yeah, deal. Exactly. Harry Potter, anyone? <laughs> you ever heard of I it? Dabble. You, yeah, <laughs> I have three Harry Potter tattoos. <laughs> uh, you haven't read uh, the Cursed Child yet, though. Because I'm boycotting that one. <laughs> Um, we actually See, have controversy. A, I did already. <laughs> we have a, a couple questions. Um, uh oh. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Fernando says Eiffel Giants is amazing. I wonder what's Thank the you. idea behind the animal ears that Barbara wears. There are several types, I think, bunny, bear, etc. What's the idea behind the bunny ears? Sure. So in the comic, uh, the ears actually started because in her original description, Barbara was a uh, she was a fiery redhead with a lot of curly hair. She mm -hmm. would have looked like Merida from from Brave, really. Yeah. Mm. And uh, and Ken was drawing it manga style, drawing it black and white. And he's like, well, we lose the red. And every time I do this curly hair, it looks like spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. He's like, so could we try something different? I said, well, what do you have in mind? I was like, well, the, the kids that I know who are into this stuff wear all these crazy hats. And some of them wear animal ears and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he sent me a bunch of sketches of, of Barbara with sort of straight hair and, and the glasses and the cat ears and the rabbit ears yeah. and the Sherpa hat. And I was just like, sold. It's done. And then the rabbit ears obviously became... Yeah. iconic mm -hmm. um so for the film we just kept the rabbit ears and um yeah that was that was a creation we you know explain them a little bit in the film uh where they come from we don't address it at all in the comic right um and we try to make them uh move at one point <laughs> and uh, poor madison tried to wear this like 10 pound moving rig <laughs> oh, uh, and it turned out not to be a good idea so so there but if you if you pay attention in the film they do sort of emote Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Similar. personality to the ears. Yeah, they they're, really, they're not just plain ears. No, no, mm -hmm. definitely not at all. Not. Definitely is, not. Is it hard for you uh, to talk about and promote I Kill Giants when a lot of the emotion that comes from the book itself is from the final act? And you yes. kind of don't really want to, I mean, you'd, I would love to just talk about the final act in both movies for the longest time, but you, you want people to experience it their own way and, right. and right. feel it. Is, how does that work with promoting the book so often and, and still kind of holding that together, not uh, revealing it? The thing, uh, and, and you might've had this experience just with however you found the book, people are very kind about just read it. Don't ask any questions, just agree, read it, yeah. which is very cool. And you don't always get that from the audience. And hopefully people will do the same thing with the film. For mm -hmm. myself, uh, you know, I, I've I've probably had interviews, especially, you know, it's 10 years since we first published a book, where we've talked a little bit more on the nose about what the story is about, right. uh, where it comes from. But it is a challenge. And I've, I've kind of refined my descriptions <laughs> of, like, the origins and stuff to be a little bit more mm -hmm. vague. Because it is, I think it is important to stay in her head for as long as possible Absolutely. to really get the full impact of the story. Mm-hmm. 
So no spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers no here. Spoilers. Spoiler we'll free zone. <laughs> surrounding <you're> cry. <laughs> surrounding the ficus. There's a hundred percent chance you will cry. <laughs> uh, let's see. Matthew uh, loves your writing on Marrow back in the back in the nineties. Oh, right on. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I love those characters. Uh, when uh, when Steve Siegel and I mm-hmm. uh, went on to X Men, uh, which is how we met, and Steve took the classic characters, and I took all the new characters Mm -hmm. and I loved Mar, I loved Maggot, I loved Doc. Like that team was so much fun to work on for, for me because they were brand new. Yeah. And, um, Maggot especially because I deep dove into South African slang. Hmm. And so his dialogue is like incomprehensible. And I found this, (laughs) you know, 10 pages worth of this slang. That was so great. But, (laughs) but I love Mar as a character. I always thought she was really cool. So Hmm. thanks. Um, Thanks, Matt. Question: Joe, is Barbara based on anyone you know? What was the inspiration for the story? <laughs> Barbara's based on a lot of things, but the um, uh, she started out as an extrapolation of what might my daughter be like if she were older. Because at the time mm-hmm. she was she was about six or seven. Okay. Um, and if she had followed sort of the the geeky path I was trying to push her <laughs> yeah. on, um, she did not stay on that path. Uh, she's she's a, a film buff, which is great, mm-hmm. but uh, I haven't quite gotten her into the superhero. <laughs> um, but she, uh, you know, she was sassy and super smart and precocious. And so, and and in our house, um, <laughs> uh, this will, this will embarrass my wife. Uh, my wife instituted <laughs> something called Curse Night because yeah. I used to go away uh, for work a lot, mm-hmm. and there'd be a little bit of ambient tension in the house. And so she'd be like, "Okay," and she'd just put a timer on, and go, "Okay, two minutes. You can say whatever you That's want," amazing. and it was fantastic. So. They, we're not shy in our house about yeah. how we speak to one another. Yeah. Um, they're very, every, I have great kids, they're super respectful, but they, they both, both my son and my daughter, you know, they, they, they know how to use the tools, <laughs> but they, they've grown up. I've told my son many times, you, you need to learn to fight or run because right. you've got a mouth on you. So, uh, yeah, so Barbara was initially inspired by sort of, you know, by her and what might she be like as, very as cool. we go on. There's uh, someone's asking your favorite Deadpool story that you wrote. Before you answer, I actually grew up on your Deadpool uh, ongoing. That was the yeah. first Deadpool series that I bought. Ed McInnes was the artist sure. who's still like one of the top five artists in the biz. But what was your favorite uh, story? Oh man, uh, we we <laughs> it's um, they're almost rated in terms of things we got away with. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, gosh. There, I mean, I was on the book for three years. Um, I love Deadpool. I'm very proud of Deadpool. Uh, I got to work with so many great artists, and with uh, one of one of my favorites is is probably where he goes into the Spider-Man comic. Like mm. we Forrest Gump, it's like Deadpool Eleven, so we Forrest Gump <laughs> into this comic, and we just savage Norman Os- Osborn's hair and all sorts of stuff, and uh, and Blind Al becomes Aunt May. It's just really tricky yeah. and fun. So that that one I'm I'm fond of, uh, and then there's some really dark ones. There's there's a there's a dark one with Walter McDaniel where he shoves Al in the box. It's really rough. <laughs> uh, like you know, their relationship is not quite as as bouncy as it is right. in the film. Um, and a lot of your run is has made it into the movies. Yeah, which has been uh, it's surreal. I mean, I, seeing seeing Blind Al is amazing to me mm-hmm. like that that was so cool and she does such an amazing job and uh and then yeah the you know sister mary margaret's home and ajax <laughs> and francis and all that stuff yeah it's it's uh it's been really cool did you get shipped out to the premiere Are you like a vip on on set uh, what's the no. story let us know <laughs> yeah <it's all> right. <laughs> uh yeah I, I would love to say i'm like a cameo in the background of i'm you should be. you should be the ryan reynolds <laughs> right. face you actually are deadpool yeah. you should be yeah, i'm sure you know rob gets some credit but i feel like you should be a stanley-esque cameo Absolutely. on these movies <laughs> totally. like a hot dog yeah. vendor or something in the background yeah, yeah that, that'd be fine you know I let's did, make some calls there's a waitress named kelly in the first one so i don't know if that's if that's the call out but uh, yeah. uh, Ryan Reynolds I know you're watching right now let's make it happen make it in, happen. Re- in happen. reshoots in please reshoots. Yeah, totally you can seize you out the beer yeah. too that's, they do that now they do that yeah <laughs> um, so I think one of the beautiful things about I Kill Giants is that uh, something that you and Ken talked about in the back of the book was that it's available in so many different languages mm. all over the globe, and it still resonates with everyone on such an emotional, relatable level. Um, how do you think the movie's going to resonate in the same way? 
Uh, so far, we've seen it with a few different audiences, okay. which has been great. Um, it premiered in Toronto. Um, I've seen it here in New York. Um, and it is it is a similar experience yeah. to going to comic conventions and who comes up to the booth. Yeah. And, and we really do get a very wide range of people, which I love. I mean, uh, you know, men, women, young, old, all walks of life uh, with their kind of giant killing story right many many tears are shed at the booth <laughs> on both sides I because, can imagine, yeah because yeah, mm-hmm. people you know i mean they they um they tap into barbara's journey on a on a deep level and so then when you have an opportunity to speak about it sometimes mm-hmm. people are talking about things that they haven't spoken about mm-hmm. in Probably a long anyone, time. right, right like, yeah and it's uh, you know so you have this weird con- instant connection with people and so I believe that people are making that connection with the film um, so far. Yeah. You know, when we've when we've uh, done a Q and A afterwards, mm-hmm. or people have come up afterwards, uh, they've they've been kind enough to sort of share those right. moments. And one of the things I'm I'm very proud of about the book, and and obviously you can't plan something like this. It's, yeah. it's just um, how it went down. It's sort of like people find the book when they need it, or the book is given to them when when they need it, and right. it's. Uh, not to make it sound magical, it's just one of those things, you know, yeah. like you didn't know it existed and then somebody says, you might like this. Right. And then it, you know, then the floodgates open. And, yeah. You know, so it's, um, hopefully, hopefully that will be the same. I'm mm-hmm. sure, I'm and sure I, it will. Yeah, I feel, and I know like, for example, uh, it's gonna open in, in France, I think in a month or so. Yeah. Um, and they're already going crazy about mm-hmm. it. So they've already had a screening with Anders and the reception was fantastic. So it seems just, be playing cool. well. Around. At least you'll be a VIP at that premiere, hopefully. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but I'll wear my Deadpool mask. Right. Probably. Ryan, I know you're watching. <laughs> Pay attention. I actually, I was stoked that uh, the film adaptation finally happened and uh, rereading the graphic novel, I'd love to see it in other mediums, like a, like a, like an anime. I feel mm-hmm. like this movie, with that style of Ken, I'd love to see an anime produced in the same vein as yeah. the comic. That would be very cool. We, uh, that had been a conversation early on um, with a few different folks mm-hmm. about should would, would we do it animated? Mm. And I said, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would now, especially, I would love to see an animated version. It would be fun. But I, I at, at the time, the conversation sort of was, well, we have the comic, you know, like we'd like to see it the further at abstraction and, and make it mm. make it real, so to speak. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a humongous. Fan of, of anime. You and work canvas. do you do a ton of work in in animation yeah, we work now in too, man right? Yeah, action is an animation uh, company primarily, and we set something on fire. And <laughs> Someone <laughs> just tried to break in to meet you. That's the end, it's Ryan Reynolds. He's here. <laughs> He's here. Uh, so yeah, we do we do a lot of uh, you know uh, Western style animation, um, but I'm I'm a fan of both. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously. Um, so yeah, Ken Ken is very uh, influenced by uh, uh, Tech on Kingcrete. Uh, and his loose line style would look so sick. Anyway. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. for sure. It would be great. So um, yeah, and then and then they just put out the new like uh, FLCL uh, <laughs> trailer the other day, and uh-huh. I totally lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to see an animated version, but uh, but I'm very we really wanted to see this the live action version mm-hmm. yeah. first. So what was the last movie you cried at? Uh. God. Uh, open my up. Kids, my kids will tell you it's like any movie. Like I just get immediately <laughs> weepy. Like yeah. it'll be moments, you know. Like uh, I honestly, there, there's there's moments in Black Panther where I was just mm. like, you oh, know, I, like we cried in Black Panther. Yeah, for sure. yep. absolutely. And Logan. Then, Lo- uh, Logan. Oh, Logan. Logan. It was just a total sob fest in that movie. Yeah. For Wonder sure. Woman. I mean, I, that first so true. the Logan. first fight with the with the Amazons on the beach. I'm oh my just god. Like, j- just to see it, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, they actually did it. They yes. actually pulled this off. Is amazing. Um, uh, Three Billboards was one of my favorite films really? in the last year, mm-hmm. and there are moments in it that I just find is really precious and, mm. and special. So, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll lose it. Really, I'm I'm like the world's easiest audience <laughs> member because I'm, I'm there for the spectacle, and I'm there to yeah. I'm, I'm there to give the movie the benefit of the doubt. And if um, if I drop out, then you know something's wrong. It's and it's very very rare, very rare. Had you ever wanted directed uh, I Kill Giants yourself? Was there a point no. where you were like wanted to do it all? No, I, I was afraid to direct I Kill Giants. I, I felt like I, I do aspire to direct. I, I did a short film um, that's, that's finished but is not out in the, the world yet um, that very cool folks helped me with a Kickstarter. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but uh, I felt like I was too close and that as a 
first time director, I wouldn't want to be the one to do it. Um, mm. there, are, there are things I'm, I feel equipped to do that and, and I would like to do that soon, but Giants, I felt like I'd rather hand it to somebody mm. else so long as I was there to have conversations. And Anders, uh, we were just of the same mind. I mean, finding Madison Wolf, you know, they went through 500 casting tapes. Jeez. Wow. He sent me 25. He said, I'm not going to tell you who I like. <laughs> I go, Madison, clearly. He goes, yeah. yes, Madison. <laughs> and we <laughs> had that with everything. And Zoe Saldana, when we were talking about her, we had both seen Out of the Furnace, mm -hmm. um, which was sort of I, the first time I had seen her in a, a dramatic you know, sort of grounded role. Yep. And we're like, yeah, of course she would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, so we just were in sync all the time and all of his suggestions for adapt, you know, changing anything we needed to tweak always made perfect sense. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I knew we were in good hands. It was like a, a better looking calmer Danish extension of myself, <laughs> uh, and let him, let him take the heat for directing. Yeah. <laughs> good choice. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's really great. Did you, you work with Man of Action and you have like many irons in the fire. What's like your day to day like with multiple projects spinning? Do you write a lot of the time or do you, you sit in meetings to talk about production? Like what, what's, what's it like for you? Uh, it's a 90% stressing about the amount of projects that I'm trying to get done. <laughs> and then the last 10% of the day is working. Um, no, we, we meet a lot. We, we speak a lot. Uh, I'm the only East Coaster of Man of Action. Um, Steve, Duncan, and, and Joe are in L.A., um, so we're talking constantly. Uh, we're executive producing a lot of the projects that we're on, so it's a little bit more uh, checking scripts, giving notes, passing stuff mm -hmm. along, carving out time to write on our own individual projects. I always make that a priority for me first thing in the day, so sort of the next project I'm doing for Ken or the next uh, script I'm writing for Anders is the first thing in the day. And then it's, uh, then it's a slew of phone calls, emails, et cetera, and, and just trying to carve out that time so that you you get the real work done not mm. the office work done yeah and they're both important if you're running your own company right. but um yeah really making that sounds like long days they can be long but you know since we're we're bi-coastal we sort of have like a 18 hour day right built mm -hmm. in, which is actually kind of helpful cool um also at the end of the book you said that you typically don't read your finished works once right. they're published but yeah. that i kill giants was the exception mm -hmm. did you see the movie Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. It's like I wonder if he saw it. I did. I did. I saw it. I, 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 again, it's, it was the opposite of all these Hollywood stories yeah. you hear, where people get like, "Oh, thank you very much for your project." Now, who are you again? You know, like yeah, yeah. none of that. Everybody was uh, generous and inclusive mm -hmm. and collaborative throughout the whole process. I mean, I, I was commenting on on wardrobe, casting, mm -hmm. sets, That's the awesome. whole yeah, the whole deal. Fantastic. And I was out there for the filming mm -hmm. um, in Ireland and. Um, uh, it, they've just been wonderful. So yeah, I did. I, I have gotten to see it, which has been. Which has been That's good. What was what was the first time you saw it? Did you were you like watching dailies and then they were like, okay, we have a, like a super rough cut. Do you want to watch the whole thing for the first time? What oh, was yeah. that? I, yeah, I saw all that stuff. It was crazy because we were experimenting with different ways to to tell the story. You know, obviously there are things that are not in the film that are from the graphic novel. Right. So it was just trying to figure out what would work and what wouldn't work and what sold the premise properly without because we're a slow burn in the comic mm -hmm. and we're not as slow burn in the film right. for a, a wide variety of reasons and so those were really interesting there's a lot of stuff you know things that were shot that didn't get used all this kind of stuff amazing um so yeah i, I really watched it grow uh there was this the longest period of time i think i wasn't directly involved was that editing process mm. of just really getting the rough cut together and then getting to the sort of fine cut because mm -hmm. that's that has to be Anders and, and his editor just sitting there yeah you know crafting it was there a, ever a part or a time when like let's say you were in Ireland and you're like damn this is really happening oh yeah were you just like you had like a moment for yourself and you're like wow this is really happening oh so many times I mean the first time I saw the ears actually yeah. created that was that was my I would have lost it I <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, the ear, we went to the prop trailer and we saw the yeah. ears and the and the um, and the pocketbook. Yeah, and yeah. We're just like what? It's You're real. Like, it's and Ken, real. you know, Ken was there. Ken yeah. flew out as well. We're, we have we do have actually a cameo in the movie. You blink and you'll miss it, but we're there. Mm. Um, I have to watch again. Hot dog. You were the hot dog man. <laughs> Never find us ever. We'll find you. Too. Uh, we'll find you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was amazing. And then seeing Madison uh, in costume for the first mm -hmm. time, seeing the Harbingers. Yeah, was trippy, super trippy because they, they obviously 
wanted to take what Ken had done and, and enhance it and do different design. Yeah. Our design team was so top notch, and those performers who uh, who did the harbingers, mm-hmm. who played the harbingers, they're on stilts. They're like nine wow. feet tall, like craziness going on. <laughs> That's crazy. So, yeah, yeah, and uh, some night shoot stuff that was just really mind blowing. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there for the green screen stuff, um, but seeing that beach, you know, there's the um, her little sanctum sanctorum that right. she has. Mm-hmm. That's actually built under that boat. That's not a separate. Oh, wow. really? And I, That's <laughs> amazing. I'm on this beach. I'm like, wait, the, why are people coming out of that boat? That's just a prop, <laughs> right? And they're like, no, the set's and in they there. They fully built it. <laughs> they just built the whole thing. And sure enough, I mean, it's made for like the size of, of a kid. And yeah. you climbed in there. And again, it was just mind blowing. That's so, so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're running out of tape. We have maybe time for one more question. Uh, let's see. Let's pull the audience. We uh, c- I also wanted to ask, um, if you have time, we usually, when we do interviews, we ask what they're reading. What are you reading? What do you recommend if you've had time to read anything that maybe people haven't checked out yet? Uh, lately, I've not read a lot of stuff. Oh, actually, that's not really true. I, I had a little stack of graphic novels I was trying to catch up to. Mm-hmm. So, um, shameless plug for my friend Steve Siegel, uh, who just put out a book called Get Naked, which okay. is a series of Sounds essays. amazing. Yeah, it, it's really <laughs> great. It's a series of essays about uh, metaphorically and literally getting naked while traveling around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, Many different artists, very cool. Um, I just read Day Trippers for the first time. Oh, wow. I should have read a million years ago, and that's a beautiful, wonderful book. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm reading It because I had not actually read It uh, back in the day. It's like 12,000 pages, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you're going to be reading for a long time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think uh, what else. Um, Nothing else is leaping to mind. Oh, uh, that one summer. I just read also. Mm. Um, Ken had recommended it to me because, uh, I mean, the art is so beautiful and the story is so mm-hmm. beautiful. But the layout specifically, he was really interested mm-hmm. in sort of as looking at our next project, that sort of decompressed storytelling. Fantastic. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks so much for being here. People can buy the movie on Amazon, pretty much anywhere where movies are sold or select Watch theaters. It right now. I Kill Giants, we have on Comixology and Kindle. Um, go read it, don't read anything about it. Hopefully we right. kept the secrets. We kept the secrets safe. Yeah. We and did. It's, Good job. It's your job to <laughs> yeah. keep them safe too. Now it's all on you. Well, thanks so much for being here. Oh, it's my yeah, pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much and thanks everybody. Hope you enjoy the film. Goodbye. Bye.